I'd like to invite you to my room of doom. I have designed a room full of design disasters. They're, they're really not disasters. That was so sort of dramatic. I've designed a room full of design mistakes and most of these upgrades won't cost a ton of money because I'm tired of videos that are like, hey, you can fix this with your entire life savings over the course of 20 years. No thank you. Think of this as The Sims, but not at all like The Sims and for free, and you actually cannot join. But <laughs> this is my room full of mistakes. There's nothing wrong with this room. We've all had this room, we've all seen this room, we've all been in this room, we've all designed this room. And we're just going to walk through this space and we're gonna make a few little upgrades. And if you don't even notice the upgrades, all I really care about is that the issues that you do notice, you learn how to fix them and you learn how to apply them in your own space. Let's start over in this area where we have the television, where we have the television. So what's wrong? Let me know down in the comments what you think is wrong here. The television is entirely too high. All right, let's 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 go sit on the sofa. We're, we're sitting on the sofa. We're, we're watching a good episode of Grey's Anatomy and to, and to look at the TV, we have to go like this. Our, our necks are going like this. We, it, it's, it's not good. It, you need a brace. We don't need a brace. The television is entirely too high. When you're thinking about television height, you want your TV to be at basic eye level. Eye level when you are seated. It is different. Now, is there a standard number I can throw out? Yes, 40 to 44 inches. But it depends on the height of your sofa. If you have a sofa with no legs, 44 inches might be entirely too high. But right now, it, the bottom of it is at five feet to three inches. That is too much. If you like to stand and watch TV, it is perfect. But you know, let's, let's not make that a habit. So what we're gonna do here is we're just going to lower the television to basic eye level. This, this says two feet, eight inches. Okay, that can be fine. It, that's, that's the bottom of it. We want the center of it, the center of the TV. So you're gonna take the TV and you're gonna measure it and then you're gonna find the height of it and you're gonna cut that in half. And that half number is that is, needs to be centered at 40 to 44 inches. And if you are not an Imperial, the worst part of my job is converting between Imperial and metric. I don't know why we use Imperial here, but I'm stupid and American. So I normally just type it in, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you want to center it there. You want it to be a very easy viewing experience. We went from that to that. That's the only upgrade we make. Did we have to buy anything new? No. Well, maybe we had to buy a little bit of spackle. We probably had to buy a little bit of spackle, but that's okay. You know what? If you don't want to use spackle, um, what I like to do is I will just get some paint and just like jam it in the hole. I'll just jam paint that hole. And I've convinced myself, I've gaslit myself into thinking that that hole is covered up. Now, if you <laughs> used um, uh, uh, anchors to get that TV in, um, that that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. But for the time being, you can leave the holes there and just adjust the TV. You will actually enjoy watching television a lot more and it will just look better. Now, what else is wrong in this corner? But let's talk about the wheat. The wheat. Okay, the, I'm not saying there's something wrong with wheat, that's fine, unless you're gluten-free. But there is nothing wrong with the wheat inherently. The, the issue here is that the plant is so low. Now, if your media console is too small, which this one is, I see the merit in having something kind of the same size as the same height as the media console because you're trying to create the illusion that it's longer than it is because media consoles are really expensive. It's media consoles, dressers and coffee tables, someone decided that if they are not $1,000 at a minimum, you can't have them. And I don't, I wanna fight whoever that is, but I'd probably lose because I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too good at things like that. Um, I, can, I can barely lift my own Amazon packages. But anyway, but we would like something a little bit taller. I would go in with a bigger plant. So look at this one, glorious. Glorious. It's filling out the space. It's balancing out the TV. It's giving height. It's giving inches. It sounds like I'm talking about a weave. I am not. I'm talking about a tree. And it's giving everything that we needed to give. It's just drawing our eyes upwards, creating visual interest. You're like, girl, if you don't stop saying visual interest, if someone has a recommendation on how I could say that better, please leave it down in the comments because I would love to know. That looks a lot better. That looks so much better. But if we didn't want to put a plant here and you know, we were tired of the wheat, right? The real issue here is the media console. So your media console should be at least 12 inches longer than your television. So you take the length of your TV, you measure it, and you add 12 inches. You add 12 inches, it's really that simple. Oh, Kiva's doing math. That means this is gonna be five feet, three inches. Killed that, right? All right, just by making that a little bit wider, it flows a little bit better. Um, 
it doesn't make the TV look like it is too big for the wall anymore. It's a very supple, subtle upgrade. Really, really subtle. Let's get, move that. Move out of the way, move out of the way. All right, let's go back here. You guys, I need to get a mouse. I don't have a computer mouse. I do have mice in my home, but I do not have a computer mouse. And I'm working on that, so please, no one make fun of me. But here's what it looks like before, and then this is how it looks when it's longer. If you do not want to pay to get a new media console though, because as I said, um, you have to pay for it with your firstborn child, is you get like a basket, something like this. Again, very, very similar in height to the media console, and you put it there. It helps to elongate the space a little bit. And then you just put like blankets in there or pillows in there or junk in there, which is what I do. And it just helps elongate it. Next, we have to talk about these curtains because these curtains make me upset. It, they really do anger me. So what's going on with these curtains right now? You can see that the curtains here um, are, they're so narrow. Like I can see part of the window peering out the other side. They're so narrow. And honestly, all interior design people, every single one of us, we talk about like how your curtains need to be close to the ceiling. Honestly, it doesn't bother me that much. It doesn't bother me that much. It's not, that's not keeping me up at night, but them being this narrow, it's keeping me up at night. If you wanted to, you can put them up here, but they need to be wider. We want this window to, to look bigger than it actually is. We love that illusion, right? That's what we wanna do. So let's just raise the height of the curtains, right? So right now they're at eight feet, four inches. Just go up a little bit, eight feet, 10. Woo! Didn't that do it? You're like, Kiva, I have no idea what you changed. <laughs> All I did was increase the height of the curtains. It makes the room feel a little bit taller. Let's actually make the ceiling a dark color so that you can really see the difference here. So here's where it is now. Then we're gonna, we're gonna shoot it up. We're gonna put it nice and close to the ceiling there. Bam. It just draws your eyes upward, making a difference. And it might not make a difference to you. Again, that's what I said at the beginning of this video. For some people, they're gonna be like, this doesn't do anything for me. For me, this does a lot. It draws my eye upward, even when the ceiling feels, even when the room feels a little bit smaller because the ceiling is dark, drawing the curtains up just makes a huge difference. Here's a side by side for you. So not only do we want to raise them, but we do want to make the curtains wider. So when we have wider curtains, um, it just fills up the wall better. I find a lot of times that people will do this. They'll do this. Um, they will have curtains, right? And then they'll shove a bunch of art in between it. And it's fine. It doesn't look bad. This does not look bad. I mean, the spacing is wrong, so it does look bad for that reason. <laughs> but, and they're crooked, but it's not bad for this reason. It's just that it feels like there's a lot going on on the wall because the curtains and the artwork are competing with one another. And this is not a competition, right? We want to work together. This is teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. So instead of having art here, what you actually want to do is make your curtains wider. This is nice and wide, right? This upgrade just makes the room look a little bit better. Um, you can even go wider than this. It's a matter of personal preference. I think when you like go wide enough where like the curtain is almost touching the wall, I think that looks glorious. Again, it also really depends on like your curtain rod and your end cap and all that good stuff. But I just think that what we have going on over here on the left makes, looks so much better. But the issue people then have, right? You're like, okay, cool. But this one is kind of in the corner. This one is in the corner. What do I do here? If you make this wide, they don't end up being like the same width necessarily because it's kind of stuck in the corner here. So first of all, your curtains don't have to be symmetrical. I know, coming from me, can you believe it? Your curtains don't have to be symmetrical though. This, is it gonna lie to me? I knew it would, I knew it would, I knew it would. And yeah, I'd let it play me like that. So what we would actually do, instead of having like the curtains bit panels being uh, perfectly symmetrical, is we'd actually let it extend further on one side than the other. Well, I feel like, I always feel this way, like I'm great at something until someone's watching me and then I'm bad at it. And that's what's happening right here right now. But that's okay. So we're going to decrease the width here and we're just gonna let this panel sit on the side here. So let's make them all look the same though so that you can believe me because seeing is believing. They're not perfectly symmetrical. They're not perfectly symmetrical by any means, but they're at the same height and you just have these panels kind of chilling on this side and you can pull them over. But you could do the same thing here. Instead of having this like this, we could just double it. You could even do something like this. Again, it gives a symmetrical look, right? It allows you to have curtain panels on both, um, but it doesn't cause like this corner issue that you're having over here on the right side. And if this feels bland, if this feels boring, throw up some other type of window covering. And by throw up, I mean hang, I don't mean vomit. So again, these colors here are, this is this is not a color scheme. So don't sit here and say, well, Kiva told me to do red, white, blue, yellow, green, 
red, purple, you know, the entire rainbow. That's not what I said. I'm just trying to give you an example, but see something like this, this looks a lot better than having those narrow, crusty, dusty curtains. So this is another upgrade that we can make. I wanna talk about this art. This art is so small, I gotta put in my monocle. This art is so small that I gotta go get a magnifying glass. This art is so small, I gotta go to Babe's work and steal her microscope. I'm not actually gonna do that. I did not steal a microscope if one goes missing. But this art is entirely too small. When you're choosing art, you want it to take up two thirds of the space on the wall, two thirds of the available space. You can measure or you can guess like what I'm about to do, but don't, don't buy a painting that's eight inches by eight inches and be like, that is gonna be perfect for my 20 foot by 20 foot wall. You know, we could just, we're just gonna use common sense for this one. So I'm gonna guess here and I'm gonna do three feet by four feet. That looks pretty good. That takes up a decent amount of space. So to do something like this, I would get rid of this mirror. I would take this art. I would duplicate it, but of course I'd get art that is different because when you get art that looks the same, um, it's very, it, it, it's boring. That's it. And then you just want to take this art and you want to center it on the wall. Wonderful. And if you have like any features, so like, if you have curtains that stick out super far, or you have like some type of decorative wall item, kind of like you see right behind me, I have this thing right there. Um, you wanna measure from that. You don't wanna include that in the measurement because then things are gonna look off center. That is just like a little pro tip there. This looks so much better, but we have another problem. What's the problem officer? The problem is this picture light. So this picture light not only is too tall, so we wanna bring it down, but it is too small. So you want the picture light to be at least half the size of the piece of art. And if you're just using one picture light for two pieces of art, you want it to be the size of one of them, right? Because we're just gonna split the difference. So if these are three feet, we're gonna do three feet, right? And then this works beautifully. But these are expensive as all heck. I bought one, it was expensive. I, I, <laughs> it was so expensive. So if you don't wanna do that, you just wanna get one that's like half the size of each painting. 18 inches would be the right size for each one of these. And then you were good to go. And then when it comes to picture light height, this is not right. This is not right. So I'm gonna do seven feet, six inches here. This is also seven feet, six inches. And this, oh, it's seven feet, five inches. But this just looks so much better. It fills out the room more. And if you can switch up with art and make them two different things, it's gonna look better. And if you can't afford to get new art and make them two different things, we're gonna take one of them. We're gonna rotate it. And oh my gosh, that's an entirely new painting. Who would have ever guessed? No one, because they did this hack. So that's what we're doing in terms of art. Now we had a mirror here before and what did we do with that mirror? I had to move it because we got art that was the right side. So I, I had to do it, I had to do it. So when it comes to layout, this, this is what we're working with here. So we have this rectangular coffee table and all this good stuff, but let's talk first about this rug situation. Your rug should be parallel to your primary seating. What does parallel mean? Let's draw it out because I don't think, you know, I don't think everyone knows everything. So let's just talk, this is parallel, it's an equal sign. And then this is perpendicular, that's a plus sign. That I didn't draw well. Sorry about that. So we actually want our rug to be parallel to our primary seating. So right now it's perpendicular to the sofa. We want it to be parallel. We want it to be parallel. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our little ruggy ruggy here. We're gonna take our little ruggy ruggy here and we're just gonna rotate it. And we're gonna actually choose a rug size that exists. Eight, four feet 11 by 10 is not a thing. I made it up, sorry about that. It's my world and you guys are just living in it for today. But when you rotate it, it looks so much better. It goes better with the flow of the room. Next, I wanna talk about this coffee table. Is there anything inherently wrong with this coffee table? No, but it's giving rectangle, 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 and another one, and another one. It's too much of the same thing. So what I'd like to do is switch it up. I'd like to add a little bit of curvature here. So I'm gonna do that by just adding in a round coffee table. A round coffee table, I think this looks infinitely better. I think this looks infinitely better as compared to where we started. You can actually maneuver around the sofa. You can play with your dog. You can play Nerf in the house like we do without hurting your shins. I think this flows so much better. Now, if this was my world, which it is again, because this is my video, I would actually change this entire arrangement because right now I feel like, where do I walk? Where do I walk, right? Where do I go? Uh, we have the shades here. I, I can kind of, I can shimmy through if I lost a little bit more weight. I'm trying, but like I, my weight is not going to be determined by like the layout in my house. That's absolutely egregious and ridiculous. I could, I could maybe shimmy through here if I wanted to do a little shimmy, get through there. Um, I could maybe walk this way. I could walk around this way. I could 
walk this way and climb on the ceiling, do like some Spider-Man action. But it's really hard for me to get to this door, which is what we're gonna say this leads to a different room. This is my closet and this is another door, right? So we might wanna rework this layout just so that the flow of traffic is better. I would float the sofa. So we already talked about your sofa not touching the back wall. Your furniture should not be touching all the walls or at least all of your furniture shouldn't be touching the walls. Some of it is, sometimes it's fine. So what I would actually do is I take everything here and we're rotating it again. We're having fun again. We're rotating it again. I love this for us. I'm having a blast. Are you having a blast? I think we're doing an incredible job. We're changing so much while spending so little. Cut to montage of Kiva editing this. over you saw me fix all of this stuff here and it looks in my opinion so much better I didn't change anything besides move the stuff around and you literally watched me do it so either you know that I'm not lying <laughs> so I made these minor upgrades and I think it has made a huge impact the only thing that I'm kind of struggling with still is like this empty space right here so I'm literally just gonna get that basket I showed you before and we filled out this space a little bit the next way I probably honestly elevate this is I would I take this color and then bring it down onto this wall just to have a little bit of fun literally gonna flank it with these sconces to give it a little moment same elevation killed that um and i think it fills it out a little bit but something super simple in my opinion also i know you said you could do the double sconce but i'm gonna splurge for this i'm gonna splurge for this because i think the singular sconce looks so much better but look at how we were able to upgrade that space there were so many simple minor upgrades or minor mistakes that we were able to upgrade without breaking the bank entirely too much. And these are things you can change over time, but these are small mistakes that you probably haven't noticed in your own home that are making a huge impact. And honestly, the curtain situation, we solved that. What you could also do, if you like to live on the edge, right, is we can take some curtains and we can use one long bracket for the entire wall. We can do it for the entire wall and then we just take our shears, we take shears, and put them underneath and we don't make them super sheer so that we are able to kind of fake out the fact that there's a space in between those windows. You don't even have to know. We're gonna keep it a secret. I won't tell if you won't tell. And we're just gonna cover the entire wall in those and call it a day. But in this case, since we're having fun with color, I am going to make the curtains blue. Um, because I love the color blue. And this is how the room turned out. So here's the before. And now here's the after. Look at how much better that looks. We didn't buy that much. We were able to upgrade these things and the space flows so much better. So if you're making any of these mistakes and now you know how to fix them and you can use a software like this as well. It's called Home Styler. You can't render like in 4K for free, but you can render for free with the watermark and all that stuff and you can get a glorious room. After, thank you so much for joining me and let me know if you enjoyed this style of video. If you did, I can make more, but design doesn't have to be difficult and design isn't just for rich people and I hope I proved that to you in today's video. If you liked the video, please don't forget to subscribe and until next time, have a beautiful day. Bye.